Okay, so let's have some great diagrams in the uh, manual. Uh, and the interesting thing is that this uh, technology, the digital technology for producing the digital display, is exactly what I was being taught when I was going to college at this exact moment. When, when this radio was being first marketed in 1977, I was halfway through uh, electronics in college. And this is exactly the kind of stuff we were uh, studying. So um, nowadays, uh, this whole shebang is one chip, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Not many, many chips. So you can see here's a card, and here's a card. Okay, so this is one of the ones you slide in and out of the back of the radio. Big cards, that's the main counter card. And then this part is actually right up behind the display. There's just a few chips, and they're all segment driver chips. So the few chips that we find right back here, right in there, okay, that's just driver chips. Okay, and I get the impression that everything is fine uh, in that area. So I don't think the trouble is up here at all. Now these guys receive a signal. You know, this looks like it, this, this looks like it's getting a number of inputs here. It sure does look that way, doesn't it? Yet there's one main output from this board. Maybe I'm not understanding it. You know, what are the chances that I don't understand it? Uh, pretty good. <laughs> Over here we have a good look at an individual segment. And we have the segment driver, a memory latch, the actual counter. And oh my gosh, here's a truth table. Oh boy, it's been a long time since I've looked at one of those. So, um, Oh, this information can help me work my way through which chip is doing what. Now, notice it says use scope here. I guess if you put uh, a regular meter on here, you're going to uh, affect the uh, data transmission through from the counter to the memory latch. I think that's why they're saying use scope. So, lots of words here. I'm not going to go through them right now. Um, so, I think what I want to find out is. First of all, what is driving this part up here? Is there a number of wires conveying data up into here, or is it on one cable? And the reason I'm suspicious it's on one cable is because of this one cable, this guy right here. Sorry about the focus here. This cable. So that's the driver board right in there. And I thought this was the output it was coming out. I thought this was a serial chain of data pulses coming out of here and then going into here into, into the back of the display and being decoded and uh, turned into the front display. I'm not so sure now. If we pull this out, I'll tell you what, I'll just pull it out. You can just watch. There we go. Pull that out and it's made that much difference on the display. Absolutely nothing has changed on the display. So it makes me pretty suspicious that there's just nothing going into this. But what is this exactly? I gotta look at the wiring diagram. So yeah, you flex the board when you put these things in and out. Yeah. So I did take every, well, you, you saw it. I think I uh, posted an edited version of me fiddling around with all these chips just before you're watching this. I'm a little confused on my video, video production here. Um, so let me just look through the manual a little more and try to figure out exactly how signals come out of that. Ah, it just takes a minute of looking at the uh, schematic to see how wrong I am about a thing. So here we are. Let me just check the focus here and make sure I've got it. I think that's pretty good. So here's the two boards again. This is the display board that's in behind the display. You can see the display numbers there. And this is the counter board. And you can see there's quite an intimate intimate connection of many many wires between these two boards so that single cable has nothing to do with this here it is here oh my gosh it's an input it's an input so what's coming in here is uh, the premix signal and again I don't know why they call it premix since there's no postmix or even mix signal as far as I know it's never referred to that way so in any case, in it comes, into here, and starts into these counters, and memories, and things like that, and eventually is conveyed via all these connections up to here. 
That's an awful lot of wires there. One, two, three, four. Four, one, two, three, four, five. So there's 20 wires somewhere. 20 wire cable or something between this card and this card. I've got to find that. And this is actually the input. Um, so one possibility is this thing's counting nothing because it's getting nothing from here. I have no idea why it would get nothing from here, but that's possible. Um, because uh, with this intimate connection here, um, I can't, what do I want to say, what am I thinking here? Oh, I just listened to a guy on the radio talking about uh, creative genius and, and where it comes from. And it was a very, very interesting discussion. A lot of stuff you would never imagine. And, uh, part of it is chaos and confusion. You need chaos and confusion. So that's good, because I can usually got a lot of chaos and confusion going on in here. So maybe that's what helps me get to, uh, you know, to, to, to leap over it all in the end and put my finger on what the problem is. <laughs> yeah. I tell you, I wouldn't go to a doctor who use that kind of theory. That's for sure. Okay. So where's the premix signal coming from? And what is on the end of this cable? So we should see something on the end of this cable. Why don't we check that? Let's, let's check that. That sounds like a good idea. We will check okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this signal source for the counter card. And I'm just going to disconnect it from the card. I'm going to feed it right into my scope here. Right into here. Okay. Great. You know, the radio's on while I'm doing this. It's not the best, not the best idea. Let's see what we see. Turn it on first. It's there, but it's very hard to see here. like it's a very large signal there. Hey, what's going on? How does that work? This is like over there. Oh, I don't know. Wrong, wrong control. Wrong control. Wrong control. It's triggering, but well. Anyway, we certainly see a signal there. Well, we did. <laughs> kind of made it a little bit hard to see. Wow. Is that some blazingly high frequency? That doesn't make sense to me. That it should be like that. Certainly see it changing.
definitely see it change frequency. Perfect. That's exactly what it's supposed to do. So that's uh, that's 3.5, 7. Okay. So it certainly looks like a a signal is coming in to this radio, and it's a high frequency. So it looks like RF to me, an RF signal, just uh, just what should be there. That's my conclusion: is the, uh, the signal uh, is reaching the card the way it should. Okay. So let's. Uh, it's a little sloppy when I did that. See, if I was smart now, I would edit that. I would do, I would do all this in advance. Get every, all the bugs ironed out. Turn on the camera and go da 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 da, -da and then turn off the camera and carry on. Meanwhile, you wouldn't know that. <laughs> I had to bend over backwards just to make my scope work the way I want it. So, okay, uh, let's put this back in here. I think I'll turn off the radio while I do this. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, anything change? Now what I think is going to happen is every time I turn this radio on, it's going to report a different number and then be frozen at it. It's pretty interesting. I'm on the 14 megahertz band and it, it reported 14. Kind of interesting, eh? Hey, come on, stay focused. Uh, again. Same number. Same number. Just a coincidence it was saying. <laughs> Excuse me, 14, I guess. Okay, so we've gotten nowhere with this. Now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the digital board, I'm going to put it up on the extender, and then we're going to start fiddling around with it very directly and see if we can spot uh, chips that are not making contact or whatnot. I mean, it, it all looked really good to me when I examined it, although a good number of the chips had some kind of what I think is uh, silver, silver uh, uh, patina on them. Okay, so let's do that. Power off. Try it out. Okay, let me get the extender. This is down all the way. There we go. Wow. Really push hard, and it goes another little step. That's what I've learned, you know. Uh, these guys again. Here we go again. Here we go again. Yeah, this guy was studying uh, genius in the world. Uh, he said it comes in clusters, uh, always in cities, and you can identify the uh, cities and the uh, years or the date ranges where these cities were producing uh, geniuses. And uh, geniuses are people who can think up stuff. Um, kind of, I don't know, how to put it, put things together like nobody else can, and. Uh, Uh, we, we, and we know their names. We know most of their names. Well, this is not going well. But Einstein, of course, is the one everybody tends to think of right away. There's many, many others. It's 
especially back through history, the Greek uh, philosophers. Oh wow, that's going to short in there for sure. Certainly need to protect that. Okay, that paper should make sure there's no shorts on the back of the card. Make this wire long enough so it can be plugged in with the card on the extender. Not me, whoever built the kit. Probably just following the instructions. Okay, let's switch it on and we'll see what we get. Here we go. Oops, didn't quite get it on. Oh, that was interesting. Turn the dial. Oh, oh, oh look at that. So all we need to do is just keep this board up on the extender. You know what that tells me? Bad contacts. So I'm on the 14 meter band that it says it's at 14. You know, I'll bet you it's correct. Look at that whole thing working again. So it's not chip contacts. Let's try a couple other bands. Seven. Fantastic. It's easy as that. I just have to leave this card sticking out the back here. So once again, it's got to be the contacts down in here. Well, let me set it back down. So here's the big lesson with this radio. If you've got one of these radios, <laughs> make sure these boards are plugged in properly. I really have been a bad boy on this. All these years I've had this radio. I actually thought these cards were different widths. Different dimension this way because I would look in the radio across the top here and I would see one of the cards is higher. Or maybe two of them were a little higher. And I convinced myself somewhere in the past that these cards were different widths. And when I did that, from then on, anytime I look in and I see a couple of cards a little higher than the rest, I go, oh, those are the wide ones. But in fact, there are no white cards. They're all the same size. They all go to the same depth in the radio. And if they're sticking up, it's because they're sticking up. Okay, now let's put it in. <laughs> wow. Zero wrong with this radio. Is that what I'm finding out? No, it can't be, it can't be that easy. It can't be. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Down you go. Down you go. Clunk. Okay, it's in there. Definitely in there. All the cards are the same depth along here now. Are we ready? Here we go. Push the button. sense that I won't short it out. Wow, happy day. Definitely. Definitely working again. Beautiful, beautiful, fantastic. Now, I'll wiggle the card here. Yeah, see it jumping there? exactly am I moving? Let's try poking at some pins on the back of the radio here. My pin poker. Let's 
So that is card A. Now I gotta keep you where you can see the counter display. Okay, and wow. I'm gonna poke the terminals on card A. Here we go. Card A, starting up at the top here. Ooh. I'm thinking that by poking these terminals, I'm actually flexing the uh, connection uh, at the bottom of the card. Because I'm guessing these are mechanically the same piece of metal going through the radio. <sighs> is that all this amounted to? It's just setting those cards better. Scrapers, scrapers. In all the years I've had, I've, when I used this radio for a few years, uh, I had various kinds of trouble with it. Now, this isn't doing anything. And it was all related to me not knowing enough to push the cards in all the way. Wow. Because I convinced myself that uh, that was normal. Well, I can't get anything to happen now. I want to break this baby. Come on. That's what I do best. I do best. Let's go, let's go way up here. So that's 14. Usually this is where I'm tuned, right here. It's fantastic. Strange noises come out of this radio all the time. WWV. A little early in the day to pick it up. I'll stick a little antenna on the back here. Because I, I still have it. I have it connected. Uh, to the dummy load. Basically shorting the output there. There's a wire on there now. A little early in the day for picking up uh, WWV. Gee, I wonder if the radio automatically switches to AM mode in WWV band instead of upper sideband, lower sideband. So you can listen to WWV and you don't have to listen to the beat frequency oscillator howling away. These are some pretty high hand bands. Oh, what's this? 26? It should say 28. That says 28. Hmm, that's a little funny. Should be 28, 28, 29. So, oh, 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 maybe that's all it was. 29, 28, 20, 26. Oh, look at that. I never ever use these these bands. I don't know any. I've never heard. Some weird stuff. This radio, you seem to tune, you seem to tune stuff in, and then it, it just takes off.
I think it's signals from aliens in outer space. They were using it. This is the outer space handband. That must be it. The alien handband. Should be able to pick something up here. That's where PSK 31 is. Upper side band. So 14200, I think there's quite often. I think there's often a they like to do a slow scan TV up in this area of the 20 meter band they do believe me well it's definitely receiving the, the dial's working the whole radio's working it's all over oh my god I beat myself silly trying to find problems in this radio now probably this dial's working properly now because I fiddled with all those chips. Uh, I'll bet you I cleared chip connection problems and then all that was left was a board connection problem. But boy, you can see how these connection problems in the radio kind of add up one on top of the other and just lead you into a, a I don't know, a no man's land of weird behavior in this radio. But uh, I think it's good to go. Now, I shouldn't say that. There's a whole pile of alignment stuff to do in here. There's one very important thing I need to do and that's to set the output of the VFO. If the VFO output, this is the VFO tuning, uh, the uh, tuning capacitors inside here, if the VFO is producing too high of an output, uh, you, you get a lot of those birdies. So uh, that's certainly one adjustment I have to make, but there's a whole pile in here and I'm not familiar with them. I've never tried aligning this radio because it essentially worked. And what did I know about uh, transmitters back when I bought this? Apparently, not much less than I know now. So, okay, so that's what we're going to do next. We're going to just look at this as a radio that needs alignment. And uh, we'll pursue it from that point of view. Fantastic. Oh my gosh, the payoff has come. Fantastic. <laughs>